All right, thank you. So my name is Sergei. Topic is here, and as Arkady has already mentioned, so that was a little mistake, small mistake introduced by me. He's my supervisor. So at first, uh, to give you a comprehension of uh, what is actually studied here, we need uh, a little bit of brush up on the public key cryptography. For those of you who might not have understanding of what it is, so I'll tr I'm not trying to dig into some mathematical foundations, but how it should look like from the user's perspective. For those of you who are aware of what it is, that's okay. Uh, so first, we need two persons, uh, Alice and Bob, who want to communicate securely over a insecure channel observed by an attacker. So then bro Bob creates two keys. So that's the basic concept. Uh, there is a binding between these keys, public key, which is green and secret key, which is red. So, and he said he keeps his secret key to himself and sends public key to Alice. And then Alice applies the encryption function using this public key and sends a encrypted ciphertext C to Bob. Then Bob applies decryption function using his secret key and obtains the plain text message M. So the trick is that it is only Bob who can do this decryption uh, function because it's only he who knows the secret key. This scheme can work in a different direction. When we have, when Bob wants to authenticate his method message uh, sent to Alice, so that Alice is assured that it's actually Bob who sent that message, he applies decryption. Uh, function to some hashed value or digest value of the message by using his secret key and sends it alongside with the message. And then Alice, uh, using her uh, encryption function, using Bob's private, uh, public key, uh, verifies the uh, signature. And uh, if it matches, uh, then Alice is assured that it is actually Bob who sent this message, and this message hasn't been altered during the transmission. So if it's clear, because it's vital for understanding further. All right. So, but a couple of questions arise. So how actually Alice know that this public key belongs to Bob? If Bob uh, gives it to Alice in person, that's fine, but it's not always feasible in the uh, electronic world. So here we have a concept of Certificate authority. Uh, just analogy might be if a person applies for a driving license who comes to an agent to actually get it, and the agent asks for a secondary ID, like a passport, to actually verify that it's the actual person who given the, that secondary ID. So here, Bob, as a user, comes to a trusted certificate authority who actually verifies that, yes, this public key actually belongs to this person, and certifies that public key by signing it by his own private key. So, and the structure that we have here is called the certificate. So that's the public key of Bob, signed by the some trusted party called certificate authority. Further, so here where uh, <coughs> networks arise here, so we may treat it as a directed graph where, graph where uh, nodes are users or CAs or any entities who can sign messages and directed edges are the uh, acts of certification or signatures of the certificates. So here, how it would look like in the trivial example and in real world, if you're talking about a PGP web of trust, the strongly connected component of uh, which contains of more than 50,000 certificates. So it's quite huge networks. So two main types of uh, structures we have here is Basic one is hierarchical, which actually is usually seen and used on the internet. When you browse to uh, like a website, your browser needs to validate the certificate of the website to actually assure you that you're actually uh, visiting like <coughs> banks, online banking website. It's not somebody else interfering with your communications, wants to try to steal your password, luring you into visiting some malicious website. So the open PGP web of trust looks like a, in general, from arbitrary directed graph where all the users can act as a certificate's authority and 
each of the users assign their own private values of trust to any subset of that users. So another concept here is PKI, which actually the real system which uh, allows all these technologies work together. So it actually uh, resolves a lot of questions, but we are interested in these two ones. So it disseminates the certificates around the users of PKI. So actually the structure of that certification <coughs> network and actually provides the service of certification. So where Alice trusts some certificate authority or some other user who verified that public key of Bob actually belongs to him. Oh, sorry. So this is vital. So one of the examples I've given you, so when you're browsing to your uh, online banking website, uh, if you may notice that green padlock icon, which says that, okay, your browser has successfully verified that you're actually at the website you're after. Okay, so we're talking about trust metrics. So trust arises here in two forms. First is the actual trustworthiness that a user has in a CA, certificate authority or any other user if we're talking about open PGP web of trust. So for instance, in X.509 standard, it's sort of a binary choice, trusted or not trusted. In PGP, there are three choices. And the actual uh, goal of this system is validity. It is the level of confidence the user has in a particular certificate, uh, which is the result of an algorithm that takes as a parameters certification networks, network uh, structure of it, the root user for whom it is computing the validity, and the, uh, their private trust values around all the other users in the network. So this, uh, what we call trust metrics. So uh, one of uh, one of main problems here is to study the properties of the set of validating certification paths. So we assume that A certifies, uh, sorry, validates X, and we have these three uh, edge independent and one vertex independent path. So configuration of this path set of paths is vital. So we may derive some nice properties like attack resistance out of the properties of this set of certification paths. So these four are just examples of criteria by which we may measure this. So at first we won't want to, may want to divide all the trust metrics by simply uh, the codomain of them. So the most uh, simple case is binary, uh, which is x.509 certificates, right? Then we have finite amount of values which open PGP resides here. And the most general case, we have uh, real values in the segment of 0, 1. So uh, now I'd like to present the most simple metric and which is actually used in practice, which is x.509. The certain assumptions. The assumption is that in real world, uh, there are root certificate authorities, like in hierarchical structure which signed some certificates. Here we merge all these root certificate authorities into one root vertex A and assign ultimate trust to that vertex. So here we have, so this metric base basically says that if there is a certification path from A root user to X, which we want to validate, with all the vertices trusted along the path, then X is valid. So the most simple one. Uh, so, and we create set of axioms, we're actually not creating them. So we're kind of disintegrating that uh, definition into simple rules, which are quite obvious, nothing really deep here, but still uh, they make sense. So first, root vertex is always valid. So A is always valid for uh, herself, which is, oh, sorry. So second, it is, if there is nobody in the certification graph who <coughs> sign x, then x should be not valid, which is also sensible. Then we have, if some y sign x, but y is either not valid or not trusted, then the validity of x shouldn't change, which is quite natural as well, because we don't want these kind of vertices to certify other x's, which are 
not valid or not trusted. And this is most powerful axiom, which is about in, what's, in which circumstances the validity should actually change. So if we add an edge from the y, which is both valid and trusted, then x becomes valid. So pretty obviously, these four axioms uh, uniquely define that simple trust matrix. Further, we want uh, to generalize this class of metrics as um, one of the weaknesses of this metric is, if you come here, so if an attacker manages to capture one of these intermediate vertices, uh, he can fool A into validating some forged certificates. Uh, so, okay, we want to, so now we require our metric to uh, validate X only if some K trusted and valid introducers, so the vertices that sign x exist. So we modify the definition. So we leave the authority of A to sign x herself, thus validating it. But for all the other vertices, we need at least k such vertices situated on certification path with all the intermediate vertices valid and trusted. So pretty simple generalization of that uh, trivial case. So in this case, we may uh, think of two uh, variants of set of certification paths. Both of them successfully validate X, but that once means that all the vertices are trusted. But uh, so if you think about the difference between these two graphs, so uh, in terms of attack resistance, the left one might be a little bit better. So. Uh, these two vertices are still uh, at the same position. So if an attacker managed to capture both of them, he still may uh, provide validation for a forged identity. But in this case, we have four vertices versus two. So these are just basic examples of what may happen here. And in terms of axioms, so we leave three axioms the same, we add an other, another axiom about ultimate trust, which is kind of connected with the first one, which says that if X signs something herself, oh sorry, if A root vertex signs something herself, then it becomes valid. And we introduce the parameter car K into the impacting axiom, uh, the most significant one. Okay, further, we may want to generalize this in terms of the amount of the co-domain of validity and uh, trust. So we have open PGP, which incorporates three possible values. Uh, I won't present uh, the definition and the axioms for this in terms of they are pretty much the same. So what we basically do is uh, we add that th third level of validity and trust into the impact in axiom, which makes it a little bit more awkward, but uh, still we need to incorporate that to synthesize that. So we may state that we come to a more broad range, uh, class of metrics, which are called hierarchical, by adding these layers of added validity and trust into the impact in axiom. So why are we actually interested in this pretty like, narrow or standing alone class of uh, metrics because some uh, infinite amount of other metrics may exist uh, is because first it's the most simple ones and uh, to the best of our knowledge uh, we are not aware of any other works on exemplification of these types of objects so we started with the most simple one and two of them are actually used in practice is simple and open PGP and they are kind of hierarchically dependent and so, uh, all right, so this was a descriptive approach. So when we provided some pretty uh, obvious but still axiomatic foundation for this metric, for the class of metrics, uh, metrics, now we want to look at a couple of uh, properties to, uh, derived from the classic uh, social choice theory. So independence of irrelevant alternatives turns into independence of irrelevant vertices and edges which basically says that 
Um, if we remove any outgoing vertex, uh, outgoing vert edge of x, and any other disconnected vertex y, this should not uh, change the validity of x, which is pretty natural. Um, second property is center of compatibility. Here we count the act of signing someone else's certificate, like creating an edge as an act of voting, you name it. And this is pretty similar to the previous property, but still we state that X can do certain amount of uh, actions without bearing any costs. So create a forged identity without anybody signing it, it costs nothing, and creating edges from himself and these forged identities costs nothing. So we may want our metric uh, to be immune to this type of trivial attacks and it states that if we, if X does any of these actions, this should not uh, change, or actually the goal of X is to improve or increase its validity for A. But all these actions shouldn't should change it. So, directions of the research. So, model possible attacks and investigate attack resistance of metrics. There are other like theoretical metrics, which largely reside in continuous a class of metrics. We may want to study them from a axiomatic perspective as well. Uh, so study these class of metrics which are incentive compatible and have the irrelevance of independent vertices and edges. The property, which actually uh, seems to be quite a broad range, but if we think of some metrics which may be derived from like page rank, if we observe cardinal values rather than ordinal, it may not be the case, but it's, it hasn't been proven. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not true. And some complexity issues arise here as well. If we impose uh, a limitation on the length of certification paths, some problems become incomplete here. So, and in, the, in the last slide, I would like to present some other perspective from which we can study this object. Uh, so if you th think about the evolution of BKI and behavior of users, how they sign keys, we may state the problem which pretty much resembles uh, the thing that uh, Matthew was uh, talking about in his talk. So the premise consists of two items. So first, uh, uh, the user, when he's entering the PKI, he follows some goals or to be able to validate some number of certificates, which is he wants to maximize or maximize the number of users that can validate his certificate. So it corresponds to out degree and in degree, but he needs to uh, and to properly uh, to maintain the security prop property of, this, of the system. He needs to actually do some work to validate users when he's signing them. He needs to actually act as a certificate authority. Otherwise, he will uh, validate forged certificates. So given the following, we have the structure of the certification network, given the specific trust metrics which is used by all the users, the utility function of the user, for instance, the amount of users that will be able to validate his certificate once he's in that PKI. And he has a restricted budget, uh, so he can sign up to N certificates. So which certificates should you already sign to maximize that? So it's, it actually resembles the problem of identifying the most influential or the most, the vertices to somehow find or and rank uh, users as, as per their influence, and then to actually choose the subset which will maximize this utility. So this, as Matthew said, has some uh, tricky complexity issues as well. So that's other direction of the research which hasn't been touched by me yet at all. So that's all. Thank you.
actually works. So that okay. If you click on a site and you're trying to validate its I don't. certificate, then how, how do all these other paths get discovered? Or does it, does it a general query go out? So in terms of computational complexity. Yeah, so if you're talking about uh, these uh, simple metrics, it just tries to find uh, the path and uh, checks the so one at least one path right it's 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 pretty easy and in terms of some other metrics which may require at least like k independent certification paths so the problem of uh, do checking whether the set of path independent path is the maximum with limited lengths is was proven to be incomplete so if we reduce, uh, if we remove the limitation on the length, then using flow techniques, uh, we just find all the all the paths to that uh, target vertex, just by crawling the graph. Yeah. 